what we're doing is going to take time. It's going to require patience. We're going to have to count on each other helping each other. And we're going to do it one day at a time. And of course, with lots of help from the Holy Spirit. Well, friends, I've gone on too long already, but I just have a few more things and we'll be finished at this part anyway. And what I want to say is that tonight, as I stand here before you, I want to share with you how very lonely I feel up here. And how much this apostolic ministry entrusted to me weighs heavily on my mind and on my heart. And so this is where reflecting on the gospel for tonight and on Mary as she pondered all of the things that were happening to her in her heart, how this has helped me to understand and appreciate my role and what's being asked of me. And the first thing that I have become very much aware of and without doubt is this. I know that alone the task is impossible. But recognizing my limitations is a good thing because it takes away any illusions I might have about what I think I can do and what I can't do. And when we, I was preparing all of this, it became obvious to me that at the moment, right now, for about two more minutes, I'm the only one that has a job here. <laughs> I'm the only one that has an appointment from the Holy Father as the Archbishop of Halifax, Yarmouth. And it dawned on me that I moved from being the 12th Archbishop of Halifax to being the first Archbishop of Halifax, Yarmouth. So I went from 12th place to the first place. Thank you. But I won't, be I won't be up here alone for a long time because uh, my first act as uh, your bishop is to appoint everyone who is presently in service as lay employees, as pastoral agents, as deacons or priests to continue your work and ministry in the new Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth. And as of this moment, all the ordained, incarnated in the former dioceses of Yarmouth and Halifax, of course, are now incarnated into the new Archdiocese. So all of you guys have a job as well. But you know, I've just said this verbally, and I would like for us to see visually, symbolically, what it means to actually share the ministry together. And as soon as I finish, I'm going to invite the vicar generals and the Episcopal vicars to come forward as I hand them a letter appointing them to those positions so that you can also see who these guys are and what they are here to try to do with me. And so, as a concluding point, I'd like to draw on the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And I make this my wish and my prayer. He says to us in that text for tonight, why, why we are doing what we are doing. And that the why, for me, is captured in these words. In Christ, we have obtained an inheritance 
having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we might live for the praise of his glory. Isn't that amazing? So that we might live for the praise of his glory. This is why we are doing what we are doing. This is why you're putting up with my long sermon. This is why we are joining these two peoples together to form one church. And so may we be inspired by this knowledge and by the purpose for which we exist. And may our new archdiocese help us all to live for the glory and praise of our Lord's name. Amen. I would like to invite, j'invite uh, uh, Monseigneur Gérald Leblanc à venir uh, accueillir cette lettre de nomination. Monseigneur Gérald Leblanc has been Vicar General of Yarmouth and tonight he becomes Vicar General of the Archdiocese of uh, Halifax, Yarmouth. And I'm glad to have him here with me. I invite Father Gerald David to come forward. He has been our Vicar General here in Halifax for the last few years, and he is uh, appointed Vicar General for the Archdiocese of Halifax, I invite Father Joseph Christensen, who is the Episcopal Vicar for the South Shore region, to come and receive his appointment and I want to thank him for having accepted to share in this ministry. J'invite le Père Albini d'Entremont à venir accueillir sa lettre de nomination. Il est le vicaire épiscopal des paroisses acadiennes dans Clare et Argyle et je le remercie for his collaboration and his service. Father John McPherson, who is Episcopal Vicar for the parishes of Yarmouth and the Annapolis Valley region, I want him to come forward and accept his appointment. Father Duncan McMaster, the Episcopal Vicar for the North Central Regions, and I want to thank him as well for accepting to collaborate in this ministry which we share. Thank you very much. <laughs> Father Jim Richards, he is the Episcopal Vicar from, for Dartmouth and the Eastern Shore Region. I would like him to come forward and receive his letter of appointment and to thank you for your work. <laughs> Father John Williams is the Episcopal Vicar for the Halifax region, and he also has accepted to be in this role of assisting in the ministry, which is the Episcopal ministry, and I thank you. I want also to call forward and to invite Deacon Bob Britton to come and receive his letter of appointment as Chancellor of the new Archdiocese of Halifax Yarmouth. He too, in his own fashion and in his own area, 
shares in this ministry, and I count on his collaboration and thank him for what he is doing. And lastly, I would like to invite Sister Marie-Paul Couturier to come forward as she has accepted to continue to serve the church and her title will be Vice Chancellor of the new Archdiocese of Halifax Yarmouth. Merci beaucoup, sir. <laughs>